In this video, we're going to talk about the graphs of secant and cosecant. So if we recall, secant of x is just the reciprocal of cosine x, and cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So how we go about graphing secant and cosecant graphs, um, we simply graph their reciprocals first. So on these images, the blue curve is uh, the cosine or sine graphs. Uh, and then from there, all we need to do is add the asymptotes. So we add these asymptote dotted lines uh, to both of these graphs. Um, and then uh, off of the cosine graph or the sine graph, off of the blue graph, we draw in these parts that correspond to the secant graph, uh, we just draw them off of the max and mins from either the cosine graph or the sine graph, and they trend toward uh, the asymptote lines. Um, and that's it. So pretty much if you can graph a cosine graph or a sine graph correctly, the secant graph and cosecant graph is not really too much more work, just a couple extra steps. So let's take a look at an example of each of these. First up, we have uh, y equals 3 secant of x plus pi over 2. So the first thing you want to do, write this into standard form. Um, so this is going to be y equals 3 secant. There's no b value other than 1. And then the d value is 0. So no, no vertical shift here. Um, now this equation is going to correspond to the cosine version. Um, so the only thing we need to do is swap out secant for uh, cosine. And then what we do is we proceed by uh, just coming up with the graph for this cosine equation. Uh, we just use all the steps for doing so. Um, so the period is 2 pi over b, so the b value is 1, so this is 2 pi over 1, so just 2 pi for the period length. Uh, the amplitude is the absolute value of a, so the absolute value of 3 is just 3 here. Um, and then let's take a look at any horizontal shifting. Draw one length of the period on a number line, so cosine graph begins at 0, ends at 2 pi, half of the period is pi, um, the quarter point will be pi over 2, and then 3 pi over 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to shift this left pi over 2 units. So what that means is on this number line, each of these five values that we just marked, we're going to subtract pi over 2. So 0 minus pi over 2, negative pi over 2. Pi over 2 minus pi over 2 is 0. Pi minus pi over 2 is pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 2 is 2 pi over 2, or pi, and then 2 pi minus pi over 2 will be 3 pi over 2. So that takes care of the, any uh, of the horizontal shifting. Um, and we don't have a vertical shift. So from here we can go ahead and come up with a sketch of the cosine graph. So label those same values after the horizontal shift. Um, a cosine graph, if we recall, um, crosses the horizontal axis at the quarter points. So here and here at 0 and at pi. And then it starts out at maximum. It's going to decrease to a minimum value halfway. And then it returns to the maximum value. And that maximum value corresponds to um, the amplitude. And the amplitude is 3 here. So we're going to go up to positive 3 and down to negative 3. So the cosine graph is going to start up here, cross at 0, reach a minimum value at pi over 2, cross at pi, and then at 3 pi over 2 it will return. So I'm going to graph this with a dotted line for now. It'll look something like that, and then it'll, keep, it'll continue. Okay, so that's the cosine graph, but ultimately we're trying to graph the secant 
um, graph. Uh, so all that we need to do is come up with the asymptotes. Now the asymptotes occur wherever this cosine graph crosses the horizontal axis. So this cosine graph is crossing the horizontal axis at pi. So we'll have an asymptote here at pi. Uh, we're also going to have one at zero. And then um, this value over here, that's going to be, what is it, negative pi. So we'll also have an asymptote at negative pi here. Okay, and then from here, to graph this, um, we just start at these maximum and minimum values and draw the curve towards the asymptote. So the secant graph is going to look like this. It's going to go towards this asymptote, towards this asymptote. I can do here something like that. So the blue part is the secant graph and the red part is the cosine graph. Um, so to correctly graph this, we really, to, to graph this equation, this secant graph, um, really what we need is these blue parts on the graph. Um, so a couple other things we want to be able to do, we want to come up with the equation of the asymptote lines. Um, so just like in a cotangent or tangent graph, the equation of the asymptote lines is going to be x equals, pick any of the asymptotes, um, I'll pick pi, I guess, and then what we do is we add k times the distance in between the asymptotes. So the distance in between these asymptotes right here is pi. So we're going to say pi plus k times pi. That'll be an equation of the asymptotes. Um, I could have just as easily have said x equals, if I picked 0, 0 plus k times pi. So in a sense, we don't even need that 0 here. So we could say x equals k pi as our equation of the asymptote lines. Um, and then sometimes it's good to talk about what the range is for uh, one of these reciprocal functions. So the range here is, well, on the secant graph, the blue graph, we're going to say this is going from negative infinity up to and including negative 3. And then we're going to union that with 3 to positive infinity. So that's the secant graph. Let's go ahead and check out a cosecant graph. We have y equals cosecant 4x minus 4 pi over 3 minus 3. So what we'll do is we'll factor out uh, the 4 and write this into standard form. x minus pi over 3 minus 3. So again, this is the same thing. Uh, or we first need to graph uh, the corresponding sine function. So 1 sine of 4x minus pi over 3 minus 3. Um, so let's just go ahead and find all the information we need to graph this sine function. The period is 2 pi over the b value. b value is 4, so this is going to be pi over 2. We have a couple shifts. We're going to go right pi over 3 units, and we're going to go down 3 units. Um, so from here, let's come up with the period length and any shifts. So the period length is going to be pi over 2, so from 0 to pi over 2. And then split this period up into four equal sections. So pi over 4 will be halfway, and then pi over 8 and 3 pi over 8. And then once we shift this horizontally, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, add pi over 3 to each of these values. Now this one is a little bit harder probably for us to do, so um, let's spend a little more time on coming up with this horizontal shift. 
So I'm just going to take these, for these five values, and what we want to do is we want to add pi over 3 to each of them. Um, now this is going to be a little bit more work because we need to come up with a common denominator for each set of fractions um, in order to add these. So 0 plus pi over 3, no problem there. Pi over 3. Pi over 8 plus pi over 3. Let's get a common denominator here. It's going to be 24. Um, 8 pi, or pi over 8, I need to multiply the top and bottom by 3, so we get 3 pi over 24, and then pi over 3, multiply the top and bottom by 8, so 8 pi over 24, we get 11 pi over 24 here. Uh, next, common denominator will be 12, um, we're going to get 3 pi over 12 plus 4 pi over 12, which is 7 pi over 12, and then so on. So finishing up, uh, we have 17 pi over 24 and 5 pi over 3. So these are the new values that are going to be on the horizontal axis uh, when we graph the sine function. So let's go back uh, and put these um, on a new number line. Okay, and there we have it. Um, so we can go ahead and begin graphing this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and plot uh, these five values on the horizontal axis. So pi over 3, 11 pi over 24. 7 pi over 12, 17 pi over 24, and then 5 pi over 6. Um, so we took care of any horizontal shifts, and then this graph is going to shift down 3 units. So here's the new horizontal axis that we're going to have. Um, now let's go ahead and uh, we'll graph the sine function. So sine crosses the axis at the beginning, the middle, in the end of the period, and then um, depending on what the leading coefficient is, that tells us whether we start out increasing or decreasing. The leading coefficient is positive 1, so we're going to start out increasing, and the amplitude here is 1. I guess I didn't state that before, so the amplitude is 1. So um, we're going to go up 1, and then we're going to go down 1 as well. So again, I'm going to graph this with a dashed line, okay? And then the asymptotes, again, are going to be wherever the sine graph crosses that horizontal asymptote, or that horizontal axis. So the asymptotes here are the locations where sine crosses uh, the horizontal axis. So let's go ahead and draw in the asymptotes. So we'll have an asymptote at pi over 3. We'll have an asymptote at 7 pi over 12. And then 5 pi over 6. And then lastly, um, we've done all the hard work to graph the cosecant. We just start at the maximum values on the sine graph and draw smooth curves towards the asymptotes, and then this will be decreasing towards the asymptotes like this. Um, so the equation of the asymptotes will say, well, pick an asymptote, x equals pi over 3 plus k times the distance in between asymptotes. So we want to know what this distance is right here. So that's just 7 pi over 12 uh, minus pi over 3. So getting a common denominator here, um, pi over 3 is going to be 4 pi over 12. So when we subtract 7 pi minus 4 pi will be 3 pi over 12, which is pi over 4. So that's the distance in between the asymptotes. So that will be the equation of our asymptote lines. x equals pi over 3 plus k times pi over 4. 
And then we could also discuss what the domain and the range is here. I, I didn't do the domain on the previous one, but um, let's see what we have. So the domain we're going to say is all x values such that x. Now the problem is the domain is everything except where the asymptotes are. So we're going to say all x such that x cannot equal. Um, then we can just use that statement from the asymptote lines. So pi over 3 plus k times pi over 4. So basically the domain is everything except whatever the asymptotes are. And then the range for this cosecant graph, well, um, we start at negative infinity and we're going to come up to negative 4. So we'll say negative infinity to negative 4, including negative 4, and then union negative 2 to infinity. So hopefully you can follow everything that's on this image. There's a lot going on, um, but hopefully if you have the notes um, or are taking notes, you're able to keep track of everything.